everybody, what's going on? Do do do. You can hear me. Strange. There we go. Hey, what's going on? This is my Q&A. So I decided to set everything up where it's off to the side here. Um, this is the area that I normally like run the different live streams and stuff from. I run everything from this live stream computer. I can start live streams with this thing and stuff like that. Um, the guys are out of town currently. Um, they are at the gathering of friends. So hey, we're here running the place and getting everything um, ready for different videos that are going to be going up this week. There's lots of exciting stuff that's going to be um, still going up. We're going to have some Jason vlogs. We're going to have some history of the Dice Tower stuff going up. So, and then still lots of reviews from Sam and Z. Um, and um, I think Tom's going to record some videos at the gathering of things he's been playing that we're going to edit up as well. So stay tuned to the channel for this. Uh, make sure to leave your comments down below or your questions down below for this Q&A of things that you'd like to ask that we can talk about the show. Um, I figured I'd do the shot from this angle. This is like the main studio here um, that's off to the side and normally this is the place that I sit when I'm running top 10 lists and switching out different shots for our live plays and different things like that. So I figured since I'm doing Dice Tower editing now and running their live streams, why not do it from this area so you get a little bit of behind the scenes as well. Um, so yeah, lots of good stuff. Make sure to leave your questions down below and I'll start answering those as people start coming in. Um, but yeah, so with this I can like set up all sorts of different graphics if you don't know. Um, I am Roy Canaday. I can make that pop up and be like, oh, cool, yay. And I try to do all that stuff um, to make our live shows look cool. Um, but yeah, Dice Tower behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. So lots of cool stuff. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty fun editing and doing all these videos and shooting stuff. Sometimes they have me go out there during Testing Tuesdays and actually shoot with them as well. But I'm always like, I feel anxious, like, oh no, I got to get back over here and start running on and doing all the different things. So it's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I have no clue. So Andrew asks, um, is there any truth to the rumor that Stronghold is releasing a deluxe all-in terraforming Marge pledge with the ter Turmoil expansion? I mean, one, one would hope but uh, I haven't seen or know any behind the scenes about that. Um, but I know one thing people would really love to see is a more deluxe version of Terraforming Mars. I know a lot of my friends, that's their main complaint about the game is they love Terraforming Mars and they love the card play, they love all the different stuff, but the graphic design and components could be way better. So I think, Steven, if you ever watch this, you probably won't, but you should definitely make a deluxe version of that game because people really want it. Um, where are my 3D printers? They looked like they were under a sink. So um, I had one 3D printer and I had set up in my closet um, right when I had moved into the new condo and uh, I had it on like a card table. And it turns out a card table is not necessarily super stable. So I was having a lot of issues when I print like taller things. Um, and then I ended up getting like a second 3D printer um, off of like Facebook Marketplace. Somebody was selling one for like less than half price. So uh, it was so cheap and I was having so much fun with 3D printing that I decided to get another one. Well, I didn't necessarily have a good place to do it. Um, and put it, especially since we're in like a smaller condo. Um, so I actually like cleared out the sink in like our, our guest bathroom sort of thing and put it underneath um, the sink and had them all set up there. A lot of people do enclosures and things like that for a 3D printer. So yes, my 3D printers are actually underneath the sink uh, and they've been working fine. I actually put like LEDs in there so I can like turn it on and like see the, the 3D printer like when I'm taking off the different prints and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Uh, what is the last game I played for recreation? Um, it's kind of funny because the, the guys have to do tons of reviews and things like that. Um, so they're always constantly like playing games for work. Um, and so since I'm currently not doing reviews because I don't necessarily have time to do them like I used to since I'm doing so much editing and different things here, um, I, I, most of the games I play are actually just for fun or for recreation. Uh, I know I played a lot of Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea at Dice Tower West, um, but one of the main ones I played recently was uh, Soko Yumi Full Moon Down. Um, the Kickstarter was coming out, and I really wanted to play uh, that game, and I knew Sam was a big fan of it. So I had invited Sam and several other guys over to the house to play, um, specifically that and Mansions of Madness. Uh, Mansions of Madness is probably the last one I played for recreation, but Sokuyumi was a lot of fun, and I told them, hey, if you're coming over to the house, you have to be playing games for fun, 
not for work. Um, so we got to play some cool games. Because um, I'm not saying that all the games we play aren't cool, but a lot of times it feels a little bit like work when you have to play games that are rated three and four <laughs> all the time. But, uh, but yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Am I a fan of Borderlands? Um, I haven't actually played Borderlands, but it's kind of interesting. I know it's like a shooter game, but it's very like post-apocalyptic. I'm a huge fan of like Fallout, and I really like Fallout 3. I haven't had a chance to play Fallout 4 because I don't have a new system to play it. If 4 or 3 ever came to the Switch, I would totally play Fallout, um, but I haven't actually played Borderlands. Um, will I be on the cruise? Uh, I was on the cruise last year, like last minute. Um, Jason was super awesome and pulled a bunch of strings to figure out how to get me on the cruise since I was new to the team. Um, but we should definitely be on the cruise um, this year, me and my wife. And uh, I, I, we brought our kids last year just because of the whole moving situation. We're trying to figure out if we're going to have like family watch our kids this year or we're going to bring our kids along again. Um, it was a lot of fun. They had a lot of fun on the cruise, but you know. It's, it's a whole different beast, like trying to trying to get your kids here and there, but uh, they had great programs. We felt a little, it's kind of funny, the cruise is actually really awesome for kids, but we felt guilty having them in like the kids programs that they had on the cruise the whole time. Um, and so it's like all, all, us being parents wanting to spend time with our kids, we'd like take them out and try to like show them, like we took them on a Jamaica and like show them stuff. And they really just want to get back on the cruise and go to like the kids programs where they can do arts and crafts and hang out with other kids. So um, it's great for the kids. Um, we just felt guilty having them in the, the, in the like kids care center all the time, but that's kind of where they wanted to be. But if you want to bring your kids on the cruise, it's probably a great place to do that too. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? Do I do a bunch of solo gaming? If I do, what's my go-to game? Um, I haven't, I mean, I've done a little bit of solo gaming in the past. I haven't actually done any solo gaming since I moved um, down to Florida, um, but I've thought about it a lot, but I've been doing so much 3D printing and doing a bunch of different other stuff. I'm trying to get things ready for this and that, um, that I haven't had as much time to do solo gaming. But if I had an abundance of free time show up, I'd love to get back to uh, Arkham Horror LCG. I love that game solo, and uh, I actually rebuilt my deck, so I don't know if that counts as solo gaming. So I've rebuilt my deck since I've been down here. I've never just haven't actually gone into starting a new campaign. I played through the entire um, first like Dunwich Legacy cycle, and it was a blast. Um, I love the story in that, and I played that solo. And then I started the um, Carcosa cycle um, with a friend, and um, we got through several things. And it was kind of interesting because then playing with a friend, it's kind of like, well, I want the cards too that I can upgrade my deck, but he was several packs ahead of me. So we could kind of still play the missions with his cards, but then I didn't have all the same cards he had. So it kind of like made this interesting dynamic where I feel like I actually prefer that game solo. Um, I'd like to play some of the like one-off scenarios and things like that multiplayer. And me and Z have actually talked about like, hey, I wonder if people would actually like that, like trying to play the um, Arkham Horror LCG, like one shots together, like build decks and do that. Um, but we haven't actually decide to do any of that stuff yet but uh but yeah that's another game that i'd love to get back to the table playing solo um and i played heroes of land air and sea like solo six players with five ais and that was insane and terrifying just watching all the ais beat up on each other and beat up on me and playing heroes of land air and sea competitively with real people is interesting, but you can't talk an AI out of attacking you. So it's like, hey man, it's not in your best interest to attack me, um, would be a normal thing you could do in any other area control game. Like, hey, you're gonna leave yourself weak here. Hey, please don't attack me, like I'm not winning. Like you have this negotiation you can do. You can't negotiate with the AI in Heroes of Land, Air and Sea or any other of these solo games. They just come in and wreck you. <laughs> and and uh, it was a lot of fun, um, but not something I'll be doing again anytime soon. <laughs> Um, let's see what else do we have here. Um, have I been following Star Wars Celebration this week? Uh, I I like Star Wars, but I haven't. I've watched. We all actually. Um, somebody mentioned that there was a new trailer for the new Star Wars, and we all ran into Tom's office and all watched it together. I actually haven't seen uh, the Last Jedi yet. I know people are gonna be like, oh, shock. Um. I don't know. I, I like Star Wars and I like sci-fi, but uh, I just haven't stayed on top of watching all the stuff for it. Um, I guess I'm not as big of a fan as I used to be um, for Star Wars stuff. I know people are gonna be like, that's an anathema. Um, have I 3D printed superheroes for Rhino Hero Super Battle? 
Do you know if you can find them somewhere? Is that actually a thing? I never thought of 3D printing anything for Rhino Hero Super Battle because I wonder if that would like change the weight of the way the game would be played. It would be cool to have like a Rhino miniature to put in there, but it would have to look like, you know, the actual hero. Um, but that would be really cool. Um, but 3D printed cards would make it a completely different game. <laughs> Plastic cards. Um, oh, they're saying specifically to add extra players to uh, Rhino Hero Super Battle. Um, I mean, I think it's fine with the number that you have. I'm sure, pretty sure you could pick like same sized meeples or whatever so that they'd still be wood. You could probably just make your own. Get out a jigsaw and just make your own different zoo animals <laughs> that could be superheroes with capes. Awesome. What is my favorite race in Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea? I actually um, did a, I have a series called Five that I do for our live board game breakfast, which goes up on um, Thursdays. Um, and my last one that I just did in the last episode, I talked about my top five heroes in Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. But my number one, um, it's a spoiler, spoiler alert is the uh, lion kin i just like the way that they do stuff with deserts and can teleport around and i don't know i i think the, the lions are pretty cool um da, 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 da. what is my primary job and responsibilities at the dice tower editing tom's reviews pretty much is like that's the job so um mostly Tom, I don't know if you know, he puts out a lot of content, and it's really awesome. He does a huge service to the community by putting out all these reviews of games you've never heard of or games that you're really excited about and lets you know his opinion on them, shows you the components, shows you all that different stuff. Uh, my, my main job is to put that stuff together, edit that stuff. I also do the lookbacks. I do um, other random videos that come up during the weeks, and I run majority of all of the live stream stuff we do, which is kind of interesting because I'll be like working on editing reviews, working on editing this, working on editing unboxings, and then I'll come in here, have to stop that, and run a live stream because all that stuff's on a schedule. Like we have to be live at a certain time, we have to do all that stuff, get everything ready. Um, several of the guys help put together a lot of the um, videos for the live streams, like um, Sam will do the intro for the top 10, but then I do the outro for the top 10 because the outro has everybody's um, picks. So the rest of the guys aren't allowed to see each other's picks because we all do that off the cuff. So they don't know and you get that genuine reaction of like, oh man, you picked that game? Like what's wrong with you? Um, which is the, one of the great parts of the top 10. So I run a lot of live stream stuff, which is very scheduled, then do all of Tom's uh, reviews, which is, I think me and uh, Chris were actually counting it. It's like 12 reviews a week, um, which is this week will be interesting because we're not going to have the reviews, but we're going to have, uh, I'm going to be editing Jason's vlogs and then other stuff that Tom's going to be sending me to edit as well. Um, so yeah, mostly a bunch of different stuff. But yeah, editing. Editing is my primary job. And live stream running. Um, t -t 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 -t. Do I read comics? Do I like Marvel or DC or both? Um, I never really read a whole lot of different comics. Like, I get comics in, um, and I just never, like, read a bunch of stuff. I read several different uh, mangas and stuff like that. I read a lot of Trigun and Naruto and stuff like that. So I read, like, ja some Japanese con comics and stuff, but I kind of fell off of that, too. Um, I just haven't taken the time to sit down and do that. I know I had a bunch of different comics as a kid and read through stuff, but I never really, like did like whole storylines of different things just because I never really had the option to get full storylines. Um, my wife was really big into X-Men and we ended up getting a bunch of a certain X-Men series like when they had rebooted it. Um, and I don't even remember which one it was. And I started reading through several of those and we try to like buy them each time we went out um, when they came out, but it's hard to keep up. I guess getting an online subscription to that sort of thing would be a lot easier way to consume it. But there's so much free stuff you can get with like um, manga and stuff like that that uh, I've never really taken the time to do all that sort of stuff. Do, 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 do. Cool. Do I ever go to any of the cool stuff meetups? Um, I try to go to as many of them as I can. It's kind of interesting. We have um, the Dice Tower meetup is the last Saturday of each month at Cool Stuff Miami. Um, and that's where we play board games and all sorts of different stuff. I definitely try to do those um, if at all possible. Um, but, but that's really cool because it's a like we starts pretty early and you can do the whole day long. Um, there is also another board game meetup which is not officially the Dice Tower. That's at um, 
that's on Tuesdays um, at Cool Stuff in Miami as well. And I try to get up there to do those um, sometimes, um, but I definitely don't do like every week. Like I purposely try not to do every week because it's a little bit of a drive. And I actually record my podcast on Tuesdays, so it's hard for me to like get up there and then get back down. Um, but I do like to go up and like hang out with different people from like meeting new people in the Miami area that are excited about board games. It's really cool to meet the different people that play games um, around here. And uh, I wish like I've done my podcast for like three and a half years on Tuesday nights. And it's like, man, Tom was like, oh, you should just change, change it so you can do game night. And I would, but I don't want to like switch everything up after we've done it for so long a certain way. Um, but who knows? Uh, I have still go up to game night sometimes and then rush back home to record my podcast, which is good because then I can immediately talk about the games that I just played. Um, but it's a little bit of um, traveling for the amount of time I actually get to play games there. Um, what was my favorite band growing up? Uh, when I was super young, I really liked Audio Adrenaline, which is like a, a, a Christian rock band. But uh, when I got into my teenage years, I started really liking MXPX, um, which is like a um, West Coast punk band. Um, they had they were kind of one of those where it's like they're kind of a Christian band, not really like sort of thing. They had a couple of like albums on some of those things. That's how I found them. But um, then I ended up getting a ton of their CDs. And I still really enjoy MXPX and that kind of music like pop punk style music um and most of my favorite bands are that but i'd consider mxpx my favorite and i got an mxpx tattoo on my leg so therefore i don't think i'm allowed to change my favorite band at this point because once you get a tattoo then it's uh set in stone forever i guess <laughs> um what would be my grail game um so it's a game that i already have i think uh, I really love War of the Ring. I have War of the Ring 2nd Edition, um, and I love it, and I painted up some of the, the characters, like the, the different like leaders and stuff, and I'd really love to paint the rest of it. Um, but I would love to have a copy of uh, War of the Ring Collector's Edition, the original one that came in that giant wooden box. I don't even know where I'd store it, because like, we don't have as much space as we used to. But it's just crazy that there's like this giant wooden box with like elvish script all over it and um, all sorts of different sigils of the different houses. And it'd just be one of those things that's like cool to own. Um, I guess Grail game is one of those things like it's not necessarily like just to play it, but just to like have it and be that thing. Um, and I thought that whole concept was really cool. But I have seen some of the paint jobs on, on that. And I'm kind of like, hmm. I mean, they're, you can tell that they're pre-painted. Maybe they could have done a better job. I'd have to switch out some of my miniatures maybe. Um, yeah. What kind of tools do I use to clean off my 3D prints or printed pieces? Um, so there is, it comes with a scraper that I scrape off the um, thing from the thing. And it, the 3D printer I had came with a like little scraper, like you'd have like a paint scraper or like a little spatula thing that you'd use for like drywall uh, spackling and stuff like that. But then also it came with um, like snips um, sort of the same thing you would use to clean off, uh, like cut things off the sprues for like miniatures games and stuff like that. It came with that stuff. I already had some, but uh, I use that to like clean it off. And uh, if I need to, I can. I have some sandpaper. I could sand stuff down if I wanted to. But normally I don't go that far. I just snip off all the supports and like clean everything up and make sure everything looks great. Um, I actually thought about doing. Um, I'm going to be kind of running the live board game breakfast. I thought about doing a segment of printed pieces live where I kind of showed off like in real time live um, some 3D printing stuff and kind of showing supports and that sort of thing um, was one of the things I was interested in maybe doing live if people were actually interested in that. You have to let me know in the chat if that would sound cool. Um, let's see what's next. What's my favorite roll and write game? You mean, what's my favorite Yahtzee game? I don't know. I haven't really played a whole lot of Roll and Rights. Um, the, the thought of them is not necessarily something that I'd be super excited about. I know there's a huge amount of Roll and Rights, and tons of people are super excited about it. But it feels very like, hey, cool, like a new form of Yahtzee where you roll the dice and try to get different combinations. I'm sure they've put a lot more mechanics in it and made it super interesting. And I've seen ones where you draw like little maps and things like that, which might be cool. But there's nothing that... Roll and Rights, like, 
that a roll and write has that draws me in at all. I don't know. I'm a very thematic gamer, and I like theme and story in my games and playing these roll and writes. They're normally like multiplayer solitaire, too, if you're playing them. I know a lot of people play them solo. So it just seems it, it's Yahtzee. Leave your hate comments below. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, is it bad to like every game that you play? Um, that would be awesome if you could like every game that you play. I mean, even if you enjoy playing games that uh, other people don't necessarily like, I mean, it's still cool if it like works for you and works for your group. Um, and it's cool. I mean, games are to have fun and to relax and uh, to get to know the other players around the table and to build relationships. And I, a lot of times it doesn't matter if the game is good or bad as long as you and your friends are having fun doing it. You know, That's one of the great things about the board gaming hobby is that you can build relationships around whatever game you're playing. And then sometimes a good game makes for a really good experience, but sometimes a bad game you can still have fun and act silly with your friends. So even if you're dogging out the game in the process. Da, 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 da. Do I think a painting segment might be a possibility for me? Um, you like the, the work that I did on Quad Heroes. Um, I've thought about it. I know a lot of people have done it um, on the channel before, and we don't really have a whole lot of people currently doing it. I know um, Ambi recently did a like amateur's guide to painting, and she painted up some of her stuffed fable stuff, which I thought was really cool. Um, but I don't know if that's a thing that people would want to bring back. I don't know if there's anything I could add to the discussion other than stuff that's already on the channel, but I know a lot of that's like been a long time now. I know um, Rob Warren and Sam did tons of like how to start painting and all that sort of stuff, and there's a lot of stuff back in the history of that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm a very slow painter too. <laughs> so I'm not like super quick at doing anything. So I don't know how exciting that would be to watch. But I, I've i done that sort of thing before. I try to like keep talking the whole time, but it makes it a little bit harder to paint properly when you're talking the whole time too. It's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. What's next? What's next? Um. Have I ever cut someone's hair while they were sleeping? I'm guessing this is in a response to Tom's story about trying to cut um, cut Jimmy's hair while he was asleep. Um, no, I have not. Uh, or maybe actually, I think this comment just randomly kept coming up. I don't know. Um, no, I haven't cut someone's hair while they're sleeping. Um, I've cut my son's hair before, um, which we uh, use the iPad and distract him while doing that, but definitely not while he's asleep. Um, and then I cut my own hair and I'm definitely not asleep when I'm cutting my own hair. And I definitely need a haircut as is because it's a mess and getting a little bit too tall to stand up. And you know that's a problem. Nice. Let's see what else we got here. Um, what's my favorite character to play in Battlestar Galactica? Um, you like Baltar, but Sam is wrong that the person playing Baltar is always a Cylon. Well, the reason he says that is, well, for one, they don't like Baltar at all. I mean, Baltar's okay. He's kind of, he's a little bit annoying, but um, like in the show, that is. But the character gets two cards at the beginning. So, I mean, just odds is more likely, or he gets extra cards at the beginning. So it's just, the odds are more likely that he is a Cylon. So you're immediately gonna be distrusted just cause if everything's equal, we dealt out the cards, more likely Baltar is going to be a Cylon than anybody else, just off the basis of that. But you have to see how people are playing and try to catch those little things to see if they're trying to pull one over on you. Um, and maybe like check his cards to see if he's good or bad. Because um, you never know. It always depends on the player and if they're actually good at hiding being a Cylon or not. My favorite character to play is probably Leodama because I like doing the whole piloting thing and he gets to jump out in a ship each time that there's things and flying around and shooting up ships. Um, the couple last two times that I played um, was with Sam and I think Sam's favorite is also Leodama. Um, so he played him and uh, so I would just play other random people, normally like a repair person or something else. Um, last time I played I was human and we figured out who the Cylons were, but we were, I figured out who one of the Cylons were and I was not, I was too nice and I should have immediately nailed them to the wall, thrown them in the brig, put them out the airlock. Cause I knew, like I had figured out, like it was one of those things where you just had like this gut feeling that, oh man, they're not helping us. 
they're not being as helpful as they should be, they're bad. And we kind of all knew, um, but we didn't want to just be mean to the guy and do all this different stuff. Well, it came back to bite us because he, of course, revealed himself as a Cylon, did terrible things, and then him and the other Cylon just continued to do wave after wave of bad thing to us. It was still a really close game. I mean, we were really close to winning, but with some of the other modules we were playing with, it made it just really hard for the humans in general. Um, but man, I w did so good in that game because like one of the first jumps, we got like super far. Like we were halfway through the game because you're supposed to get a certain number of points. We're halfway through, like in the very middle. Um, like, I, I mean, we're, we're halfway through, um, why did I say that in the very middle? Halfway through, like after the first round, which was good and bad at the same time. We didn't have a whole lot of damage, but then there was extra, like the sleeper agent sort of thing came back to bite us. But, um, but yeah, I love Battlestar Galactica and it's a long game, but I feel like it's epic enough and worth it to play. Um, do, 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 do. If I play Super Smash Brothers, who is my main? I don't know. I like Link a lot. Or uh, if I'm not playing Link, I'll play Roy because, you know, his name is Roy. So why not? Um, but yeah, I, I, we got the new Super Smash Brothers and I really wanted to play it. But I just haven't taken the time to play much of Super Smash Brothers. I'd love to like sit down with Scotty and like put it up on the TV and play some, some epic battles. Um, our Switch controllers are kind of messed up. So <laughs> I need to get like a new Switch controller because that's what happens when you have small children. Um, but yeah, what is my number one game of all time? Uh, this is a tough one. Uh, for the longest time, this would be easy to just say, oh, it's Twilight Imperium 4. And I love Twilight Imperium 4, and I love that game as like the giant quintessential epic 4X space game um, with the intrigue and the trying to figure out how to do your objectives and min-max getting those points, but then talking people out of attacking you and then going and sneaking in and getting all sorts of stuff. I love that. Um, but I think Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea has surpassed that for me just because the amount of times that I'm able to get Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea to the table and I can play it and teach it quickly and I've taught tons of new people Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea and jumped in there and it still scratches a lot of that 4X itch of gathering resources, building up troops, um, getting points and collecting objectives, attacking your opponent, um, figuring out where they're strong and weak and trying to go over here and like build up things. Like I'm trying to get over there and build a tower and defend it so I can get extra points for that tower at the end of the game then build up my civilization, unlock all these special abilities. Um, there's a lot of cool 4X stuff in Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, and it takes a fraction of the time to play. You're always engaged because you're trying to talk people into doing certain ability or do certain moves like, hey, if you do the recruit or if you do the tax action, I'll do the recruit action. That way we can get more serfs. That way we can have more stuff to follow in the game, be able to have more farmers to get those resources out for us. Um, I've been very like passionate about that game super recently, and everybody knows I've been playing that like crazy. Um, Tom actually makes fun of me. He actually went, Tom told me a story where he went to the Gamelin Games booth and asked, um, asked them how much they're paying me to talk about Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea so much. I just really enjoy the game um, and I've had a lot of fun playing it. So not paid at all. I just like it. Um, but at this point, I feel like I played it a lot. So, you know, I really want them to make even more content. But I'm like, here in the consumption of the game where other people are just now getting their copies with the new stuff. I've been playing the game for forever, so I'm already ready for more. Yeah. Um, nice. Thanks, Adam. Have fun shooting pictures. Oh, Trigun. Yeah, yeah. I actually have a Trigun tattoo as well, but I will not show it to you. <laughs> um, how long have I been playing tabletops um, before coming a part of the Dice Tower. Um, so I kind of grew up in a family where uh, my dad um, likes a lot of war games, and my dad played Dungeons and Dragons in college and also played a role-playing game called Gamma World. Um, we kind of always grew up playing like a lot of board games, different things like that. Um, but as we started to get older, um, I was just always excited about playing different stuff um, as far as tabletop games go. My dad, I think I think we were like 11 or 12, we started a Gamma World campaign, which is like post-apocalyptic D&D. Um, we all had our different characters. You're basically like mutants. You'll have mutants. You can be like mutant or pure strain. And it was like a whole like rite of passage scenario. It's called a, like famine in Fargo, where you start in this village that's running out of food and you have to like go out and try to make your way in the world and, and help your village. Um, but we started out as different mutants. I had a character, and uh, he his like powers where he could he could like smell 
very well. Like he could, uh, he had like super senses. So it's kind of weird. Like, oh man, he's like smells good. But it was good because we could, I could smell when bad guys were approaching sort of thing. I also had like a power where I could like touch objects and be able to tell like the past history of it and like previous owners. So it's like really weird abstract mutations, not necessarily stuff you see on all the, the superheroes all the time. There's a lot of weird stuff. So it was very intriguing as a kid playing this game. And I played with my brothers, my brother, and um, a couple of uh, guys that were part of the homeschool group slash went to church with us. Um, and we played a ton of that game. I played the same character from like when I was like 11 or 12 to all the way up to like we were 18. And we had like this ongoing scenario that we'd play through. Um, so my dad definitely got me into tabletop gaming. Um, I played a lot of that, which was like how I loved role playing games and telling stories and like figuring out what your character is and what you're gonna do. Um, and then I also got really big into Redemption, which was like a Christian collectible card game. I really wanted to play Overpower, um, but my parents were like, which just seems strange, but they're like, oh, we don't know what X-Men is or whatever. We're going to get you this game instead um, after I found it at like a Christian bookstore or whatever. Um, and I played a ton of Redemption after we actually figured out how to play the game. At first, we were terrible at it, um, but then we actually started going to tournaments, and my dad would run local tournaments and things like that. Um, I also played Dune growing up with my dad. Um, he was really big into the, like, the sci-fi stuff. He had like the Dune board game. And we played like Wizard's Quest and like a bunch of other random like old school like I guess they were maybe TSR games but he also had ones from like war game companies but I was really big into more like the fantasy sci-fi stuff I was never I was never a big fan of any of the like actual real life war games and I know there's a lot of people that really enjoy those kind of games but for me some reason they just never really appealed to me which seems strange I figured like my dad, being such a big fan of those games, would have tried to get me to play more of those, but he never really did. We just always played like the fantasy type stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, what did I do for work before doing board game reviews? Well, I never actually got paid for doing reviews, but now I edit people's reviews, so I guess that counts. Um, but yeah, uh, I worked at Target for 10 years. I did like facilities management at Target, which is basically where I'm in charge of making sure the housekeeping is getting everything clean. I'm in charge of making sure the facilities are working properly. We changed out light bulbs and fixed toilets and like worked on air conditioning units. And like we would also be in charge of any of the vendors we would have come in to fix stuff. Like, hey, we need this door replaced because there was a crazy break in or something crazy. Like Target is full of all sorts of interesting drama. Um, but yeah, we were just always in charge of like making sure the vendors were doing what they were supposed to do, making sure that the grounds looked good, make sure landscaping's doing their job. Um, lots of phone calling, lots of like inputting data in the computer of like what to, how this took this long to do, that took that long to do. We need to get this vendor to come in to fix this. We need to get this replaced. We need to get somebody to come in and set up this specific display for this specific product that's coming in. Um, lots of different interesting management and stuff like that. And then we were of course in charge of like safety and making sure people were doing what they're supposed to do with that sort of stuff too as well. Um, but I did that for 10 years and then I stayed home with the kids for a while and tried to work on doing b more board game stuff. Um, but I wasn't really being compensated for that at all. But uh, me and my wife were both like working at the same time and we we're having our kids in daycare and it was just so expensive that I stepped away from Target to be able to be with the kids while they were super young um, so my wife could continue with her career and because um, she was getting paid more at the time so um, so she could push that further um, and then I started doing a little bit of work at like a place that like exports or imports food from Mexico, puts on pallets and ships it out to a bunch of different Mexican stores. Um, it was pretty cool. It was an interesting job and definitely had lots of, met lots of awesome people in that job. Um, but yeah, that was what I was doing right before I worked at the Dice Tower was mostly just stacking boxes on pallets. So this was a much better improvement because that was kind of like a in-between job sort of thing. I worked overnight and it was a pain especially since I didn't get to see my family as much. So moving here was a much needed improvement from getting away from that. Um, oh my goodness. Where do I, where should I be? What question looks good? Uh, have I played the Portal games? Kent asks. Um, 
I played the first Portal a bunch when it came out. I think it came in like the orange box or whatever for Xbox. I had that, and me and my friend basically just took turns playing through a bunch of those when it first came out. Um, I never really played the second Portal, even though that would have been more fun for playing with my friends. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed those, the puzzles aspect of it. I feel like I get a lot of that same itch from... Um, uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild because there's a bunch of like puzzly type stuff when you go down in the little the little um, layers and stuff like that um, which is really cool um, which I actually really like um, I'm on the fence about picking up Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea how would you convince me or someone else who feels like this I mean I'm not paid by Gamelin so I don't have to convince you um, I think the game's really good and I think it's fun um, if you're going to have a lot of chance to play it with um, four, or f basically four players or more, like four or five, I think that's a lot of fun and the best way to play the game, um, even though it makes it take a little bit longer. Um, there was a recent thread about um, is it good two players, and I feel like most 4X games are kind of hard two players, um, just because if one person starts getting ahead and doing better in their resource management, it's a 4X game where you're getting better as you go along. Oh man, if some random, if some random like ex exploration tokens hurts you a lot at the beginning, you could fall behind. So in a two-player game, there's no third player or fourth player to help balance if somebody's getting further ahead. Um, so one person can just like do really good in that game, and it's just like there's only one other person to be mean to, so you can't like spread around the attacks and attack different people. You just are attacking your opponent in that game, and I mean it's not that bad, but it's one of those games where you're building up awesome stuff. And it hurts a little bit when you see that awesome stuff get destroyed in front of your eyes. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I think the game's great. If it looks like something you play, um, that's cool. It's definitely very expensive. Um, but I think, I think it's, it's a lot of fun. And if I didn't have the game, I would buy it again. So there's that. Uh, what game have I owned for the longest? Um, so speaking, I played Redemption Tournaments. I actually had won some uh, like credit for the little store at a Redemption Tournament for like winning a bunch of games, like I think in a sealed tournament or something like that. Um, and I had credit, and they actually had a board game called Robo Rally there. Um, so I actually got a copy of Robo Rally because I'm like, this game looks really cool, and I think I had played it like once, or maybe I just knew about it. It just looked like a cool game. So the the longest the board it was like the first board game that was like a hobby game that I'd actually consider like me owning it, and I still have it in my collection. And I got that back when I was like 14 or 15, something like that. Um, but yeah, and I still I'd still play it today. I really enjoy Robo Rally. I know it's chaotic and crazy, but it was the Avalon Hill version of the game, and I uh, still really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. What do I think about Robinson Crusoe? I've never actually played Robinson Crusoe. Um, I had really high hopes for the um, whatever the Mars game is that's supposed to be similar to it. Um, and we played that, and it felt a lot more mechanical than I thought it would. I didn't feel like a lot of theme. It was just running around fixing stuff all the time. I would like to play Robinson Crusoe. I know it's a really hard game, but I heard a lot of great things about it. I've just never actually played it. Uh, 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 um... Um, having just bought a 3D printer, um, I would like any content on 3D printing. So I guess that's going back to me talking about doing something live about 3D printing. Um, was I doing video editing professionally before relocating to Florida, or was I in a different field? So I just talked about all of um, the, the stuff that I've done before, or some of the stuff that I've done before, but uh, I wasn't doing 3D printing, or not 3D printing, I wasn't doing video editing professionally. Um, I had basically self-learned all the stuff I'd done and ran Favor Game Fridays and put together my reviews. I started off doing like Favor Game Friday on my phone in iMovie back in the day, and I did that and put them up on Instagram and started learning more. Um, we got uh, the Adobe Suite, um, just because my wife wanted to do some awesome like drawing stuff and things like that with it. But I ended up using it a lot more for the Photoshop and for um, Premiere Pro. And I learned how to use Premiere Pro and I just watched tons of YouTube videos and got really familiar with it and how to edit things and make things look like decent and good. Um, and I guess Tom liked my videos enough after talking about it and figuring out all that stuff. It's kind of interesting because like 
there's YouTube in general, majority of those people, like they just are people making YouTube videos. And I mean, the Dice Tower is definitely full of just YouTubers and we're all people just trying to make the videos look the best we can. I mean, there's some teams that have people that are professionally trained and all that stuff. But uh, there's a lot of stuff you can learn out there on YouTube about how to make your stuff look better. And I've tried to utilize a lot of that stuff. Um, when I came to the Dice Tower, I switched over to Final Cut. Um, which was interesting because in a lot of ways Final Cut's easier to use like you can drag and drop stuff but it's a little bit more limiting so I really enjoy using Premiere Pro to do intros and graphics and stuff like that then switching over to Final Cut with my template of how I want things to look and dragging and dropping stuff in the right place so now I currently use like a mixture of those depending on what I'm doing um da -da 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 -da. oh Jim says he loves playing Baltar for that very reason that's because you're a Cylon. I mean, you just admitted that you like to be a Cylon. Way to play the game on easy mode. It's always easier to win as the Cylon. When humans win, it's way more meaningful. Cylons can easily destroy the ship. This game's already against you. So whenever I play a Cylon, I don't know if I've ever lost as a Cylon. Like, it's so easy to win as a Cylon. It's not something to brag about. Win as the humans. Win as the good guys. Then come back to me. Um... <laughs> Da, 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 da. Did I ever listen to Five Iron Frenzy? I'm actually a huge fan of Five Iron Frenzy. I feel like one of the first, like, I went to like a concert festival thing um, called, I don't even remember what it was called, but it was up in Pennsylvania. Like our youth group took a trip up there and we went and there was just tons of different bands playing, like all sorts of old school, um, contemporary Christian, like punk rock Christian bands, whatever. Um, but Five Iron Frenzy was one of the bands playing and I feel like that was one of the first bands I was actually like in the pit for when all the craziness was going down. And if you've ever been in like a um, ska band pit, it's definitely very different. Um, so uh, yeah, I definitely um, enjoyed Five Iron Frenzy a lot and grew up listening to a lot of their stuff. And I still listen to their music today. So um, I, my, my, I've tried to share that love with my kids as well. Uh, they like listening to all the little silly pants songs and things like that that they had on their one CD. Um, but yeah, we enjoy it. Um, what is my favorite ship in Zaya? I should do, I, that's one of the ones I should definitely do is the ships for Zaya um, for f my episode, my five thing where I talk about my top five. Um, I really like the, um, the one where you get to reroll the dice, but it is almost too good. Like I, if, if I'm ever teaching someone the game, I'll give them that, like it's called like, I don't even remember all the names of them, but it's the one where basically you can spend energy to reroll the, the die once per round. I mean, it's just like the entire game is risk management. And if you get a chance to reroll those like critical failures, then it's just so good. Like you can just go mine in certain places where you blow up and just, you don't have a chance of like failing because if you fail, you re-roll the die and you don't roll again. So it, it makes the risk management so much easier, but I feel like that one's on easy mode. I really like the one where you can jump through the shields. That was the first one I ever played. And I just don't like taking the long right route around. It's, it's fun to be able to go through, but there's a lot of good ones. I played with all of them multiple times. I'm actually really excited to play with the new powers, um, but I feel like I lost my upgrade pack for that in the move. I think it went to my old house and I don't know what to do about getting another one. I might have to buy one, which is kind of lame. Um, da, 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 da. <laughs> they said they they liked my energy talking about Battlestar Galactica. It's definitely, Battlestar Galactica is one of the games that got me into the hobby. Like I played board games and tabletop games my entire life. I played CCGs, I played role-playing games. I tried to make my own miniatures game as a kid, but I played miniatures games as well. I got into a little bit of Warhammer, but like board gaming itself wasn't like my hobby. Like I was into magic and D&D &D at the time, but a friend invited me to play Battlestar Galactic. Well, he invited me to go down and play D&D, &D, technically Pathfinder with some of his friends, but we ended up playing several games of Battlestar Galactica and I'd never played a cooperative board game before. I'd never played a game where you were like on the same team, which helped fill that little, like that itch of um, like D&D &D where you work together as a team in a game. Um, but it also had this whole hidden trader aspect of it. I was just like, board games can do this. Like, I just didn't realize there were board games that could be so thematic. And I hadn't even watched the show. So, yeah, I, I definitely have a lot of passion for Battlestar Galactica, mostly just because, like, it's the game that, like, 
brought me into board gaming. And I'd played a lot of board games before, um, a lot of gateway games like Catan and Carcassonne, but it never made me want to start collecting games and getting games and showing my friends games like Battlestar Galactica did. Da -da 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 -da. So there's more passion for you. Um, is there a certain brand of filament that I'm using? Um, I forgot the name of it. It starts like with a T. I'd used it a lot, but honestly, I got just a whole bunch of different filaments, mostly just anything that I could find for super cheap to print out all these different towers for Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea in like each of the faction colors, just because the filament I wasn't using um, wasn't that good. Uh, or, I mean, it was good, but it didn't have all the colors that I needed. Um, so, I mean, I've used all sorts of different ones. I don't necessarily have a particular one that I like so far. Um, one thing to be aware of, though, is that different filaments need different temperatures um, to work properly. So make sure you have the temperature right, because I had one that didn't stick to the bed properly and went to work for the day, and then I just came home to a glob of plastic um, instead of the thing I was trying to print. So hey, make sure you read the directions before you use a specific filament, because it just needed to be up by, like, 10 degrees or whatever, and then it would have been fine, which I've used it since then. It's been fine. Um, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so what's the average height that my body fluctuates when standing? I guess I rock back and forth and jump in, in my videos. Everybody always says and makes fun of. I haven't had as many people making fun of me about that recently. Back when I first started doing videos, everybody's like, well, he jumps around too much. I don't know if I've calmed down more or if, uh, or if people just got tired of fussing about it because it wasn't going to change. Um, the War of the Spark trailer for Magic the Gathering get you interested in the upcoming set. So the magic itself didn't get me interested in the upcoming set. The trailers don't necessarily get me up interested in the upcoming set. The um, even even like looking at the cards, I mean, they looked interesting and stuff like that. But the fact that Tom was like, "Oh my goodness, I might get some Magic the Gathering and play it, or do like a draft here at the studio," um, that got me way more interested in the set. Like having like someone that I work with, a coworker or a friend, talk about how they want to play the game and actually maybe having someone to play it with got me a lot more interested in the set than just like the game itself. So it wasn't anything that Magic or Wizards of the Coast did to get me interested. The fact that Tom's like, oh man, we should play this. I'm like, okay, I would totally do that if you're actually gonna do it. I'm like, um, we could totally draft and like do a live thing of it, but uh, I don't think Tom's 100% sure on that. But if Tom got it and I had people to play it with, I'd mess around with it, but I mean, there's no way I'm going to fall into magic again because I'm too broke. And I got burned by set rotation last time. Um, but playing casual would be fun. Um, so I love my painting of the quad heroes figures. How did I go about painting them? So I think the way I paint is very similar to the way Sam paints because we've talked about it a bunch. But basically, I prime my stuff. I normally prime my stuff in like black so that I have like the deep shadows. And then do a lot of dry brushing over everything. So a bunch of just layers of dry brushing things. Um, so I dry brush like mostly like what the main colors would be, trying to like leave the recesses. And I just lightly go up in lighter colors. Like I'll start with like, okay, I'm painting this fire ember guy or whatever. It's all red. So I'll start with like a bunch of red. and then I'll do a little bit lighter, like orangish colors, or probably another shade of red, and then another shade of orange, and then a little bit lighter orange, and then move it up to yellow on the tips of these flames and stuff like that. And then go back in and like paint on bracers or different things like that. There's all sorts of different details you can do, but I just gradually start with black and then go up in color. It takes forever to do. Um, the normal way that most people paint, not most people, but the normal easier way to paint is you paint everything in like their standard colors, um, like a base coat of everything, and then put a wash on everything. But I don't know, I like the way that the, the black and the crevices, I guess it probably comes from painting Necrons a bunch and they're all like skeletons and undead. Um, I like it to have like dark black and all the crevices and build up from there. Um, is there a copy of Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea in the Dice Tower Library? Yes. Um, the Dice Tower Library is basically Tom's collection. <laughs> so he has Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, and so there's one in the Dice Tower Library. I don't think it has the Pestilence expansion, because Gambling Games hasn't shipped uh, Tom a copy of that yet, for whatever reason. Get on it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we definitely have a copy of it in there, and I'll probably use that whenever we have events where it's actually there, because Tom really actually liked the game a lot. 
back in the day. Now I think he likes to hate on it because I like it so much, because you know how that is. Um, uh, was it a hard sell to get your wife on board with the Dice Tower move? Um, my wife was super awesome and like super cool about the whole thing. Um, I talked about this last time I had a Q&A. Um, so she was, she was like telling her boss and stuff about it before I was even telling anybody about it because I was keeping it super on the down low and super private. But she knew that was something that I really wanted to do for a long time. And her being super amazing um, uh, ended up helping facilitate all that stuff. It was definitely super hard to get everything together, get everything moved and get everything to move down here. But it, everything just seemed to like fall into place. Like our house sold super quick. Um, like everything worked out with, with um, Tom like having me on board. Cause I told her, I mean, immediately when I'm like, Hey, I'm going to like apply for the dice tower editor position. And I did a lot of work to like put together a video to show Tom to answer all these interview questions. And Tom already knew who I was. So that made it a little bit easier. We've hung out at a lot of conventions before I've helped him at the dice tower booth and things. So it wasn't like I was a new person coming in cold or anything like that. But, um, but yeah, my wife was super supportive of the whole thing and you're the best. Um, da, 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 da. what's next? What kind of gel do I use? I think, am I, I guess I'm gonna get the same questions in every Q&A, but it's got to be glued. It comes in like this yellow bottle. Um, but I've used that for years, like literally, I don't know, 12 years, but you can get it at Walmart or a bunch of different places. Da, 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 da. Um, Let's see. Any chance that I'll do another top 100? Um, you discovered and picked up Nexus Ops and Wiz War thanks to my 2017 top list of games. Man, I actually still really like those games. Nexus Ops is still really good. It's like if you want the most basic 4X-ish feeling thing where you gather resources, I guess, I guess it's hard to call it a 4X game, but it feels like that. You're getting those crystals and building the little bug guys. Um, man, top 100 with my current work schedule would be, be really hard to do, um, especially if I'm doing it here at the Dice Tower. Um, I feel like things would have to change before I'd be able to do another top 100. Um, I also feel like I need to play a lot more of the new games. It would be interesting to see, to know where everything ranked. Um, but it would definitely be a lot of different stuff on there because um, 2017 was a while ago. Um, but I feel like a lot of stuff would be very similar. Still love Nexus Ops and Wiz War. I played Wiz War at Dice Tower West, and it was like one of the best games I played the entire time. Um, I don't know. It just ended up being really great. That game's all about like backstabbing and starting to stop people from winning, and people were blocked behind walls for multiple turns. And then somebody tried to pick up a treasure, and they make them drop it. And every someone would drop a thing on their thing, so they had one point, and someone else would come behind them and pick it up. And it was just like we had no clue who was going to win the game because someone would get close and someone would stop them. The next person would get close and someone would stop them. The next person would get close and someone would stop them. And just had an epic finish of like, all right, I do this and I stop you. And he's like, nope, I play a counter spell. And then he goes. Nope, I play a counter spell. Nope, I play another counter spell. And it was just, I don't know. Wiz War is still fun to me. It's silly randomness. It's not a strategic game, but the stories and the fun stuff that comes out of it is well worth playing the game. Um, and I just have a blast with it. And it's one of the only games I have that's like, I've completely fully painted, <laughs> which is really cool. Um, let's see here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Easy Tiger is the Zaya ship that lets you reroll. It's called Easy Mode for a reason. No, I'm just kidding. I love that ship. Um, but I feel bad taking it. But when I played the game solo, I wouldn't feel bad taking it, and I would just rule the game, and it was a lot of fun. Um, Roy, it depends on if you're the Cylon in the beginning, and if there are more than one Cylon before handing out the new cards. It's not always easy to play the Cylon, definitely not easy mode, we should play it. Um, I don't know if you know this. If you ever listen to my podcast or talk to my co-hosts, like I do pretty well <laughs> in social deduction games, especially if I'm the bad character. 
Um, majority of the time when I play Battlestar Galactica, like I can easily blend in with the rest of the people. It's a terrible thing. Um, but I just put myself in the mindset of, hey, I'm a good guy. I'm going to cheer with every good thing that happens, do what I can as a good guy. But you just throw a little bit of inefficiency in there. You throw in one person not helping as much as they should. You don't even have to throw stuff. You don't have to throw stuff. You don't have to make things be bad. You just have to be inefficient. And in that game, if there's characters that are being inefficient, the game's fighting against you so hard that majority of the time things will run out. And you just throw that massive blow katana when you're like, guys, we need to work hard. If we fail this, we're going to lose the game. Everybody put in your best stuff. We got to do this. And you put in nothing but garbage that ruins it and you make it fail because you've been holding all these cards the whole time that you should have been playing in other things. But mentally you're saying, guys, we need this, guys, we need this. Man, I don't have the cards that I need. I shouldn't be telling you guys all my tells, but everybody always accuses me in those games anyway, so <laughs> it'll be fun. Um, but yeah, I still feel like Cylon is easy mode because the game is fighting your battles for you half the time. Um, being a thematic gamer, what is a Euro game that I would recommend? I actually like a lot of like lightweight Euros. It's always interesting. Probably the games that I would call a Euro game, people would be like, that's not Euro. Um, I really like uh, Chambers of Midgard, but it has lots of thematic stuff in it, you know, like actually dice rolling to fight the bad guys, which Euro players don't like. Um, I really like, um, very similar, also has dice rolling, is uh, Alien Frontiers. Alien Frontiers is a lot of fun. Area control, um, you're using dice to um, do different stuff. I guess Century Spice Road would also be a Euro game. Um, I really like how fast that plays. I like family weight Euros. Like I'll play Takenoko or different things like that. Um, but as far as like heavy Euro games where like I look at the board, there's a bajillion icons and I just know that that's what it is. I actually normally do decent in Euro games because I can figure out how the mechanics work and I can figure out how this and that works. Um, and normally somebody who's played the game a bajillion times will get first because in those games you can normally math out what the best plays are and if you have played the game more you're going to do better than people who haven't played the game before and i normally don't play these big euro games more than once i normally end up getting like second or doing really well and people are like oh man you actually did really good and i'm like yeah um but in the end of the day majority of the only thing i can take away from these euro games is tim got 83 points Susan got 37 points. This person got that many points. Um, and for me, there's not a story or narrative that comes out of it. There's not as many exciting moments um, that come out of Euro games. And I'd rather just play games that are more exciting and are more memorable. A lot of these Euro games are just like, okay, cool. The person who studied the game the best wins. Good job. Um, but yeah, and that's nothing against actual Euro gamers. You guys are amazing and awesome. My favorite games are actually more of a mixture of thematic and Euro. They have like a lot of the cool, solid Euro mechanics, but then add a lot of theme in the game. And for some reason, I just like games where you can attack stuff, whether it be NPCs or the other players or whatever. Um, conflict is pretty fun. And a lot of these Euro games are multiplayer solitaire. But if you're a Euro gamer, you're awesome, and you play a lot of awesome games, and there's a lot of people that really like those games. Um, but give me theme. Um, Mark says, Wiz War is so fun. Mark, we should play Wiz War someday. Um, yeah, I really like Wiz War. It's, it's definitely very silly. Let me go back up here. Um, have I ever, have I had a chance to play Escape Plan yet? You were surprised at how thematic it was. Escape Plan. I'm not exactly sure which game that is. I'd have to look it up. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't actually played. Um, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. I don't know a whole, like, I like Star Wars, but not as much as a lot of the other guys in the office. Um, but I mean, I grew up with it. Um, I just kind of fell off the train. Mark Street's going to get mad at me in the in the chat now for saying that I don't like Star Wars as much as other people. Um, what's my take on Throw Throw Burrito? I think it's making a ton of money because of the company that's being made by. Uh, my co-host 
um, Rob on Epic Gaming Night is super excited about Throw Throw Burrito, and it looks very much like like Jungle Speed or something like that. It looks like it's the same game as that, but instead of trying to grab the totem first, you're trying to grab burritos and throw them at each other. I mean, I'm sure it'll be silly fun, um, but I don't think there's a whole lot of substance there. But, I mean, I'll play somebody else's copy. Who doesn't want to throw plush burritos at each other? We just need to up the game but and throw real burritos, but you wouldn't want to waste a real burrito. Maybe if you win the game, then you get to eat a burrito. That would be great. Because burritos are the best. Um, is there a good source of forms I have found to help troubleshoot 3D printing issues? Um, Keith says he's fighting some under extrusion issues for, for a few days now. Um, normally, if you like look on Facebook for groups, especially for like your specific printer, you'll be able to find Facebook groups where people who have the same printer as you um, talk about that stuff and a lot of people like take pictures of their prints or ask about issues and they'll there'll be a lot of people in there that are sarcastic about a lot of stuff but a lot of times there'll be a lot of like helpful tips and honestly i haven't even really posted in these groups much but just from reading other people's issues and reading other people's comments help me get an idea of like oh this problem or that problem or what i need to fix with this or how this will help like maybe i need to up the temperature for this because maybe my filament isn't coming through as good or maybe this thing's slipping because a spring is getting worn out or just different things like that and there's all sorts of different ways people can help you out um, in a lot of these different facebook groups especially if you find one that's specifically for the 3d printer you have like i in, in a like Ender 3 group and it's just always people posting things that they printed and then asking troubleshooting questions and there there's a lot of people in there that are gonna act silly and be like oh man that's an e easy fix but you know um, you have to weed through the crazy comments to figure out the people that are actually trying to help you um, what do I think about the deck building aspect of Crystal Clans now that the rules are out. Um, I actually haven't played Crystal Clans super recently. I'd actually really love to play it. Um, I got the Shadows deck at Gen Con and I haven't actually played it. I used to play it with Rob um, and we were so busy and on a lot of opposite schedules um, before I left. Um, that's a game that I'd love to get back to table because I still have my copy. It's one of the games I kept when I moved. Um, but yeah, that'd be a good two player game to take. Maybe I should take it to like a uh, cool stuff. Um, I don't know how I would feel about deck building rules because I didn't really do deck building in Summoner Wars. I tried to keep the decks as they were and just play them casually against each other. But um, I would have to see. I think it has to do with like different icons on the different cards or something like that. It means you can build different things. Like you know, I have a certain number of like the bigger characters or something. Interesting. Um... Roy is always the traitor. See, the problem with that assumption is sometimes I'm not the traitor. And when I'm not the traitor, you really need me to help everybody else just as everybody else does. So uh, I'm not always the traitor. And people will nail me to the wall even when I'm not the traitor. But you know, it's whatever. I got play games of Deception Murder at Hong Kong that like the good guys would just lose just because people wanted to accuse me for whatever reason, just because they knew they could trick Rob into thinking that I was bad. <laughs> um, cool, cool, let's see. Am I looking forward to Star Wars Outer Rim? Um, I actually am super excited about that game. Uh, I uh, really enjoy Zaya. And I've heard good things about Firefly. I, I kind of am interested in like pick up and deliver like space games. I like space games in general. And Star Wars is really cool. So that would be, I feel like that's a good fit for like that kind of game. So like if you could be Han Solo, like flying around the Millennium Falcon, like doing all sorts of different stuff. I do want to see like how open it is because it looks like you're not necessarily exploring a board. There's a board that's already out there. Um, I really want to see how it compares to Zaya and other games like that. Like if it's more quick playing, if it has huge epic moments. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to try it out, but I'm definitely gonna have to like try it before I buy anything. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that comes in soon. I don't know when it's supposed to be released, but I'm definitely going to be playing Star Wars Outer Rim. Um, but yeah, 
Awesome, guys. Well, I guess uh, seeing that we're here at 11.04, I'm going to be shutting this thing down. Um, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, we're definitely going to have still have a bunch of different videos coming up this week. Definitely, um, thanks for asking all the questions. The guys are at uh, the Gathering of Friends, if you missed that. Um, but uh, Sam and Z pre-recorded a lot of stuff, and a lot of that stuff will be coming out. We're still going to have a live board game breakfast on Thursday. Um, there's not going to be a deep dive this week or uh, crowd surfing um, just because everybody's out of town but um, stay tuned um, there won't be testing Tuesday either seeing that uh, the people that test the games and actually review them are all at the gathering of friends they're testing there they might end up doing something live on the channel or on Facebook um, from some games that they have there as well so keep your eyes peeled for that um, but yeah definitely thanks so much for joining us you're all the best keep coming back to the Dice Tower watching all of our stuff and um, yeah you guys are great thanks for joining us and I'll see you later Peace.